All right, we're back. Brett's Power Hour on a Friday. Yeah, we're back. We're right before a new year, and we were off last week with traveling, with the holidays, all that good stuff. But the three amigos are all back, all scattered throughout the University of Tennessee, or the, the state of Tennessee, excuse me. We are all officially, since we have last recorded, official, official Tennessee Masters graduates. Like, that's where else are you going to get three graduate degrees from the university of tennessee on one podcast couldn't couldn't tell you but guess what it's nowhere else outside of fred's power hour here on the chase thomas podcast joining me from nashville tennessee where he has just had the delight of watching delay of game after delay of game for (laughs) the predators um the the 500 team that we all know and love so dearly brian bassett on the four check brian good afternoon sir how are you I'm good. Um, I I we ap- I apologize for last week, but um, we can't necessarily have the Preds Power Hour if none of us have power uh, at that <laughs> moment. So we rolling blackouts were a thing. Like I I made a joke because I was like, oh, I'm fine. I'm the only one. Out. And then of course, like mm-hmm. gone. And I was like, well, spoke too soon. That was a mistake. When Charlie's in West Knox and I'm in North Knox, it was inevitable that it was going to move to my direction at some point. But yeah, yeah, that was that was crazy last weekend. Yeah, it was it was something else, but um, we were lucky. Outside of that that day, uh, we did we did it all right. Like we didn't get any uh, major things. Our heat never went out, anything like that. So that's good. And uh, got to see the Preds play during part of it. So <laughs> there you go. Take that as you will. Oh, uh, always a treat. Also here, Charlie Burris of A to Z Sports. Charlie, good afternoon, sir. How are you? I'm doing okay. Uh, yeah, I'm glad that that cold has moved out because that was enough for me and but now my my wife is uh doing us uh, the favor frankly Mm. of staining a table in our basement and we're having to keep a window open down there (laughs) um so we've just been you know siphoning cold air into our house so um that's been cool i'm sure our heating bill is going to be great after the rolling blackouts and Mm -hmm. she's doing that it's going to end up being a thousand dollar table that she made herself that'll (laughs) I can't wait, but uh, no, I'm doing good. There you go. And my dog over here, the little frozen tundra Khaleesi is just all about it. So it was insane trying to get her back in the house because she just wanted to live in the cold. Like it was just, it it was her, it was her Super Bowl last weekend. So (laughs) at least she gets that every now and then. Um, The Preds, my wife and I were like on Wednesday night, like the Stars game. I, I put it on and I literally get up to make some tea. And just right as the puck drops and I'm over there making tea and she's like, oh, and I was like, what? And she was like, you're not going to like it. And I was like, what? And she was like, they already scored. I'm like, who scored? It's been like 30 seconds. And she was like, oh, the star scored. And I was like, "Ah." and of course, that's just how the game goes, where every broadcast, I just need to like jot, like I'll jot down in my notes where I'm like, oh, they're going to talk about how, man, they're really attacking more on the Preds side. And they're just the Preds are not uh, getting enough shots on goal uh, yeah. early and often. Like every broadcast, we're just talking about Preds should really be more aggressive and getting more shots on goal early. And it's like it's never it's never happening. And then you get the the back to back delay of games and the Preds survive. Uh, Saros was awesome uh, in this game. I think by and large, he was uh, every Every Saros game I just look at is like the Popeyes worker from that meme of just like uh, is being super tired uh, when uh, the new chick play <laughs> or the new the chicken sandwich wars were going on. And there's only so much you can do. But like you just watch that game and you're like, this feels about right. They fought back later. But this team is just they're not the stars level. The stars have now beaten them three times already mm-hmm. this year. Um, so I think the stars are very comfortable uh, with the Preds. But I don't know what your immediate reaction um, following the stars game and, and what happened, what the story was, Brian. Yeah. So honestly, outside of that first, that first goal, which, which sucked, um, you know, the, the stars played a really dominant first period as you, as you saw, you know, they, um, they allowed, I think 28 shot attempts, Mm -hmm. um, which was, which was pretty rough and, and they were able to get under control. But the good thing that they did in the first, um, even though it seemed like Dallas had the puck the entire game, 
or the entire period. Um, they managed to get them only uh, they only had 12 shots out of those 28 attempts. So Nashville did an actually very good job of keeping keeping the stars outside, um, making sure that they weren't getting quality attempts in in that first. And hence why they ended the period, you know, one zero, even though it felt like a three nothing game already. Um, and they did, they, they just did better. I mean, their four check Dallas's four check. I tweeted about it during the game. Cause it was something really fun to watch. Cause they, you know, we talk about Nashville priding itself on being an aggressive four check team. Well, Dallas did it and they did it well. Um, Nashville had absolutely no answer on offense for it. Uh, but in the second they, they bounced back and Dallas came out a little less aggressive for whatever reason. Um, and Nashville was able to get two goals. Obviously one was on a four on four attempt. And then um, the other was a short, uh, shorthanded goal. So something that Nashville's only had two of this year, but they managed to, um, they did even better defensively in that second period, 17 shot attempts by Dallas, only four got on net. So now, yes, one of those did score uh, out of those four, but you know, they did everything defensively and in goaltending that you, that you could ask for. Um, and then the third Dallas turned on the aggressiveness again, they started four checking heavy again. And we saw what happened. Nashville had pretty much no chance. I mean, 25 attempts in the third and 17 of them were on, were on goal. That's 68%. The highest in the first two periods was 43%. So again, they weren't, Nashville couldn't keep them off target. You know, they couldn't keep them from getting close to the net. And like you said, I think, you know, that's a pretty good comparison talking about UC Soros being, uh, being like that Popeye's worker, but I'm going to say that he's, he's more like, and if, I don't know if y'all have seen it, but that the, the waffle house waitress, that uh that customer <laughs> oh i know you're about from this yeah. week in atlanta yeah. oh of course i see it yeah that's, yeah you know not not, not, the, not the can i get a waffle please that's a classic <laughs> but but like that's uc soros he's catching <laughs> he's catching those flying chairs it's just mm -hmm. he's having to do it like i don't know 30 times a game mm -hmm. and so you know hey uh it, it kind of it's one of those where i also always laugh when people talk about how like oh man he's uc soros is gonna want that one back and i'm like i'm pretty sure they all want all of them back, but mm -hmm. I see what you mean by it. I mean, it's, he's, it's one of those things where his, his record, and we'll talk more about Saros later, but like his record does not indicate the type of season he's had. And that's just because there is just zero offense uh, on this team. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where Nashville has really struggled as far as um, if they don't score three goals, their chances mm -hmm. of losing or winning are very, very low, you know, and that's, that, that's, not great because you know again they can be a good defensive team they do have uh you know they've got uc saros in net but there's just not much of an excuse as to why you know the power play is still not good at all i mean so it's one of those where it's like what do you what do you do at this point where you know saros is doing the pecorine thing where he's putting in his you know putting his heart out there and then just not getting the win so you know how do you how do you address that but they did look better in some of the games before that obviously they had a three game point streak um, beating Edmonton, which they beat Edmonton, you know, um, <laughs> they didn't, you know, McDavid had a pretty good game, but the old, the old nemesis, um, and the old nemesis whose name is actually completely escaping me at the moment. Um, oh my God. I, 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 dry side. I'll thank you. I was like <laughs> German is all I could think of. Yeah. Zero points, zero points, you know, for Nashville. And so that's, that's good. Like, you know, they, they were able to, to, kind of get over that bugaboo of, you know, they had an eight, nine game winning streak uh, they did. And, and that's where the winning streak stopped, which is pretty impressive considering that the, the, the overall like franchise history uh, before this, uh, before this winning streak or well, the losing streak that uh, Nashville had against Edmonton, they traded off wins and losses. And then Nashville had a 14 game winning streak before that. Um, that was, I think 10 of them were by Pecorine and like McDavid didn't score on him once, I think in that time. I mean, if you think about it, if you remember back when they had the uh, the All Star Game here in Nashville, McDavid, they have video of him uh, talking about playing Rene, like doing the shootout competition, mm -hmm. and he's just like the guy hides, haunts my nightmares. Like I don't know why I can't beat it, I can't beat Pecorine, but he just can't. But that's not much of a problem anymore, unfortunately. Um, everybody scores, it seems like, for Edmonton as much as they'd like. Uh, so, but it, it, there's, we're seeing some some change. I mean, you know, you look at the team where they're at, they've played a lot of good teams and they have one, you know, they've got a good team left this month. So it, it'll be interesting, but you know, this month so far, I think four, four and four. So the very definition of a 500 team, the very definition of Preds hockey for really the last couple of years. Um, Charlie, do you share Brian's sentiment here on this week and the, the lack of wins since December 21st? It, it just is kind of the, 
defining feature of this team. I, it seems like, I guess, it's like you're going to get two pretty good games. Look mm-hmm. at that. They beat Edmonton, and then they turn right around. And yeah, admirable effort against Colorado and, and Dallas. But, I mean, like what, as far as it goes with Dallas in particular, you just you got to win those games. Why, why do they have our numbers so badly now? Um, Dallas is a very good team. They are. And yeah, I mean, it's it's another team in your division that you let flip the script on you. Uh, and that, I mean, it, it was, was it the 2019 playoffs where they beat us in the first round? It, it seemed like it's just been downhill from there where they, they were sort of like, okay, it's us now. We're, we're going to be this team, not you anymore. And so it, yeah, it, it's just tough. There's, um, the, the goal, I agree with Soros. He could be all of the hero that he wants to be, but what are you, you going to do when you don't score goals? I It's just really frustrating to watch, frankly, especially when you look at some of the star power that the Predators have. It's not overwhelming or anything, but I mean, it's there. And, uh, you know, I, I think this is just how it's going to end up being. Like five 500 seems about right for this team. We are at a point where we're really seeing who they are and this is this is it right i i i just don't see it getting markedly better without some like you know what, what was it the 20 2019 blues miracle sort of <laughs> thing yeah. which i do not foresee happening <laughs> yeah um on the positive side Brian, mm-hmm. record breaking night for yosi the other night how big was that for him and uh his career I mean, that's it's it's massive. Obviously, you look and, you know, we're at a point in the both, you know, his career and Philip Forsberg's career where these guys are taking over a majority of the of the franchise records for Nashville. It's it's great to see Roman Yossi again, a, a homegrown guy. That's, a, you know, a guy that what didn't come during the during the rough times where they weren't exactly great either when they when they drafted Roman Yossi. But I mean, obviously, I think he is far, ex, you know, far exceeded what they thought he could be, you know, even their most optimistic uh, projections when they did it. And so, you know, you can't, I mean, you have to be extremely, extremely excited, you know, for, you know, if you're working the organization, you're a fan, anybody really, uh, just with what he's done, the impact that he's made. Um, I was trying to look, I think there's at least seven franchise records that, that Yossi now holds, hmm. um, which is just an incredible type of thing. I mean, obviously... You know, the getting the most points in a career is is incredible. I mean, he's passed David Leguan. Philip Forsberg is about uh, 70 points behind him. Um, so, I mean, that's that's just real impressive that it, no one's going to catch up with him. I don't think anytime soon, if he, especially if he retires. I mean, even Shea Weber, 443 points and Ro- Yossi now has 568. So, I mean, that's that's something that's just really incredible to me. I mean, he has the record for most points in a season. He's got, you know, most points by defenseman uh, it's just it's really incredible to look and see about the stuff that he can he's done and despite you know the season being where where it is you know nobody on the none of the skaters on the team are really having that great of a season either um after last year you know it's a nice you know feather to put in yossi's cap especially since now he's you know on the second year of his big new contract and you can't say that he hasn't delivered on that. I mean, he's absolutely delivered on that one. And it's it's pretty impressive. I mean, to get paid that much money uh, is really, you know, and then to exceed expectations. That's just in, in, something incredible, I think, to me. Yeah, oh, what do you think, Charlie? No, I mean, he's <laughs> the the one piece on this team that is consistently being the guy you know he can be, the guy that you want him to be. And it, I would say at least you have that working for you. I wish that there was more of that going on. Um, I still do kind of come back to, this is more of an overarching discussion about Yossi, but like, is he the best captain for this team? I've thought that. And, and I don't know the dynamics. I don't know the dynamics there. And I come, I come from a, football background football basketball where kind of the most aggressive guy out there the best like vocal leader is usually the guy that you appoint captain and he's just not he's a quiet assassin he just is out there i I don't i don't know maybe maybe i'm wrong behind closed doors maybe he's getting up in guys faces and smacking them around i don't know but 
Elsa, obviously, he is more than living up to that contract. That's amazing. I love that. He's the best defenseman in hockey, even still, I think, or close to it, if nothing else. Uh, but beyond that, that's the only question I have with him <laughs> is where I go, is is that some of the problem, maybe? And nobody wants to talk about it because it's Roman Yossi and he's the best defenseman in hockey? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So, so outside of, and you can't say Shea Weber, uh, Outside of, of of Shea Weber, you know, which which uh, captain out there have you seen even now or historically that has in, in hockey has been out there and been that rah rah type get in your face? Yeah, that's guy. true. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying now this is this is also exposing my limited knowledge. I mean, and a lot of people would say that, you know, Shea was more similar to what you want. But I mean, this is a very and I hate to say this, but I mean, this is a very common criticism of this team on, on Predators Facebook, a place that I wish none of you ever to have to spend as many time on um but you know just again because he he is a guy but I, I will say this and this is you know just from my perspective i don't know them well you know super well yet personally but you know like there's a respect like they know that he's going to be out there like he is out there on the all the bad losses he's out there in post game you know they heinz trusts him to get out there he's going to give the, the right answers you know um, but I don't think it's a question of, you know, I don't think Roman Yossi or any other guy out there who could be a captain is going to be out there fixing the issues with penalties or doing anything like that. I mean, a lot of this is just discipline stuff too, but I mean, I don't think a, you know, a different captain would make that. I mean, if you look at the roster as it is right now, I mean, I could see making an argument for gosh, uh, I mean, Forsberg maybe, but I don't think that's, he's not, that's not his 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 thing i don't think he ryan mcdonough yeah yeah you could get a new guy to be your captain i guess but i mean the man's out here risking his life he's just over here anything like he is yossi's or he's sararis's best friend where he's just flying around the net like doing whatever he can mm -hmm. to be like i'm so sorry you're having to deal with this i'm i'm doing everything i can when i'm on when i'm on the ice it just feels like he is he's his best friend uh, yeah but sometimes, i mean sometimes fresh eyes can be the the solution well, sure. though yeah I mean, so somebody coming in especially a guy that's won cups like he has and can kind of be like all right this is not the yeah. way that this is supposed to be and maybe he could bring something like that i i don't know many are saying it's thomas novak many many are saying <laughs> no, many. no no See, if people are really saying it it's 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 captain cole smith but Cole Smith, they love on the broadcast. You know how those they notes do. where you're like, they are going to hype this man up whenever he's on there. He's He's got all the buzzwords where it's like gritty. He tries really hard out there. And he's getting a ton of hate on social mm -hmm. media. And so I think they've, they're also doing that to kind of counter it. But yeah, real, yeah. But, but I mean, going back to Yossi real fast. I mean, like, I don't know. Besides McDonough, that's I, I'll give you that one argument because I don't have anything to counter it really. <laughs> but like, I don't see another guy that would be like a better fit. But I mean, mm -hmm. if you look at what Yossi's done, I mean, so uh, looking at Evolving Wild, their stats, like they'll take their their goals above replacement for a year and they can convert it basically and say like how many standing points did they add to a team uh, independently and they can get a value on that. So like last year, for example, his contract is, uh, what is it? It's about $9.1 million a year. And he produced a value of $18.2 million, you know, so career he's earned f almost $58 million dollars. Uh, his value over his career has been $96 million. So this is a guy that's nearly doubled kind of what he's been paid, even though he's now had, this is his third season on his, you know, was it 9 million, 9 million and 59,000, you know, that 9059 to get his Jersey number in there. Uh, mm -hmm. So, I mean, he, even this year where he's not doing super great, he's still, you know, producing a little bit, you know, just over value. So it's, it's, it's good. It's a guy that I can't sit there and point to. I mean, as the skaters, who are you going to point to and say has been like the best skater all season as far as like putting points up and making a difference in games? I mean, I could I would argue I'd argue like Nita Ryder or Ekholm, but Yossi's right up there and Yossi plays such a huge, huge, you know, part in this team that you couldn't really do much without him. And that's kind of going to be one of the feathers in David Poyle's cap, you know, to say, hey, like, look what we did with Yossi. The, the deal worked. The deal with Duchesne worked so far. The deal with Forsberg worked so far. So we'll see. Speaking of, we'll see. Uh, Roland called up uh, this week. Uh, he was recalled uh, on the 29th at, from Milwaukee. Uh, Jordan Gross, who obviously played well, um, he was called up a few weeks back. He's now back in Milwaukee. Um, what is the latest on both, Brian? How are you feeling about both? Uh, yes. Prospects? So, yeah, uh, 
Roland McEwen, uh, he got called up. And I think for this purpose, um, he was probably called up because they've got back to backs. They've got obviously Anaheim today and then mm. Vegas tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night. And so they're both, you know, two away games back to back on the on the road trip. You know, McDonough has just come back. Carrier has just come back. Uh, so I think that's just a depth move in case somebody's mm. not ready to go. Um, you know, there's still Borvietsky, who's I don't even know if he may be traveling with the team. I'm not positive. But he's also there. So it's giving them a little bit of an option, you know, when they come in there. I don't expect to see Roland McEwen out very often. He did fine, you know, in, in, in uh, you know, his performance. It's the same with Jordan. Actually, I was very impressed with Jordan Gross in, in his short time and actually was pretty confused as to why they sent him back down. But I think it's just because they had their guys coming back and there's no reason to, to you know, use up games on his eligibility, you know, for his, for being waiver exempt. So I think that's part of it, but he looked great. I was very surprised his play with Roman Yossi. And it's not been a thing where anybody who plays with Yossi does great. I mean, it's just, he did really good. Good. So I I'm, I'm impressed, but um, he's back there anchoring Milwaukee's blue line. So yeah, I think Tommy Novak, he came back up. They did a weird thing and you can read more about it actually on, on the four check. Uh, one of our new authors, Catherine wrote an article about why they might've sent Novak down over Christmas break and then called him right back up. Um, I think they saved a grand total, a whopping grand total of, because I think for three days, I think he was out or four days. I think he, yeah, they saved $4,000 in cap space for each day he was in the minors. And for the three-day Christmas break, they saved in real dollars, <laughs> just under $10,000. So sure, I guess. Um, Every penny counts. Yeah, it's one of those where it's just like, hey. They're too close to Dave Ramsey. They need to move the show. That must be what it is. That (laughs) must be what it is. So, I mean, like, I don't know. It was just a, a, hey, we're going to paper you, which means they probably reassigned him, but he didn't go anywhere. Um, And uh, we're going to pay you less money for three days. So, yeah, he means, like, the difference is he makes $432 a day in the AHL. Mm. Um, on his AHL deal, he makes four thousand dollars a day in the NHL. So for those three days, they told him, "Like, all right, here's twelve hundred dollars instead of twelve thousand. Sorry, buddy." <laughs> um, but you know, That's hey, wild. You, you never know. It's you know, when I, it's easy to talk about cap numbers and stuff, but when you look at like real dollars and real payroll and stuff. That's one of those things you don't hear as much of it down there. You know, we've got escrow and all the other stuff to deal with, but I don't know. I'm not sure why, but he's played well. They've trusted him. They've put him up on the top line with Forsberg and Grandland usually. Um, mm-hmm. I think at the Dallas game, they they moved him back down, but he's played pretty well. I mean, he's he's I've been impressed with him. I'm not sure why he's up there, but as far as, you know, compared to some of the other guys that, that have been around, but, you know, hey, it's we'll see how it works, but it's nice to not be relying on three AHL guys on your uh, on your defense. You know, now these guys are healthy. It's great. Uh, Charlie, the young guy that has impressed you the most in the last few weeks, you've been on the show in a couple of weeks. Who are you most like, who gives you the most optimism uh, among the guys we've talked about, or even someone we haven't talked about? It's a good question. I haven't, uh, I, I will be totally honest. I haven't watched as much as I probably would like to, Been having a, a wild time. I don't think I've been on here with you guys since uh got my roof replaced and somebody smashed their foot through our roof and our hvac went out and uh they're actually there are people in my house right now fixing this the ceiling as i'm doing this they are 100 percent. they're right out in the living room fixing that um so been a wow. little a little preoccupied yeah um in terms of breaking it down that minutely mm. I, I mean i i would I, I don't know. I, I don't want to give uh, a wrong opinion here. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Charlie was talking to me earlier. You know, he's being bashful right now, but he definitely said that he thinks he's impressed with Cody Glass. <laughs> ah, yes. That that was. The, thank you. That is what I would say. He <laughs> has been the best, without a doubt. Uh, no, I mean, and that's. I mean, this has to be the most important thing for this team at this point, and it's probably the thing is finding like new talent that's going to lift this team up that's probably the most annoying thing to me about the fact that they're not doing anything with Poyle is that he's like making moves for the future of the franchise Mm -hmm. and should he be the future of the franchise like that's it's 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 made me I relate to that I also don't think I've been on here since this either it makes me relate to the Titans Mm. with with John Robinson Amy Adams, the owner of the team, went, well, this guy's not going to be doing any of the stuff in the offseason, so why would he be doing any of this stuff right now? So 
you're fired, you know, and that's kind of what bugs me because there's it's just it's been a lot of movement with those young guys this season and they're trying to you know trying with all of these different dudes to figure out if they're you know finding anything and um i don't know that that might me be me taking my fire david poyle take too far uh but i Yes, I'll I will defer to to Brian on that one though. The man That's... is going to be buried under the ice. I don't know what we need to tell you here, Charlie, but the man is never leaving Nashville. Like he's here for the long haul, and his son's going to do great. We're all excited about <laughs> uh, Baby uh... Boyle, uh, other Haslam, uh, the 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 duo that many Preds fans have long awaited. Yeah, we're all excited. It... Um, in terms of the last individual uh, conversation, where you do some stats to wrap up here. Um, UC Soros has been fantastic. Um, you have some stats for us, Brian, on just like we talked about at the top of the show of just what he is doing. And he's like the Waffle House worker, just catching these chairs, with this bare hand, doing everything mm-hmm. he can to keep the Preds in these games. What have you found that like people may undervalue about just how good UC has been this year? Yeah, I mean, we've talked about how, you know, UC ha- has has a little bit of a reputation for struggling at the beginning of seasons and relatively to what he's doing now, he did. Um, it wasn't too bad, didn't spend too much time in the in the negative as far as, you know, what he was letting in. Uh, it just wasn't the, the level of play that Nashville was used to seeing from UC Soros. But, you know, you look at his record right now, he has pl- he has started 26 games, which seems like way too many, I think, because Lankanen was brought in to help out. Uh, but he's 11, 10 and five. So, I mean... He's played 26 games and only won 11 of them. And I, you know, I wouldn't say that that's his fault. You know, this he's averaging, you know, 2.82 goals against uh, uh, against average. And so, you know, again, if I bring back that point of Nashville can score three. They have a chance to win. Um, you know, his save percentage is 91.4, which isn't great. It's slightly below uh, what his career average is. But if you go and look up and look and see what he's done. So overall looking at those goals above replacement basically just breaking down the you know the impact of him being on the, on the ice uh, he's fifth overall in the league um with like 17.9 and uh Ilya Sorokin is he's in the league with 23 you know 23.5 but then you know the company ahead of him is Hellebuck, Linus Olmark, Andre Val- Vasilevsky he's right up there and this is what i said before the season like he's going to get back to that level of of really doing you know everything like really making a, a huge impact and it just may not be reflected in in what, you know, it just may not be reflected in his record, which is unfortunate because he's put up, you know, one hell of a season. You can't you can't argue that. I mean, he's saved 16 more goals than expected. So, I mean, that's 16 more goals that should be on the board, you know, in this season in 33 games that he hasn't allowed in. And so that's I mean, that's really, really impressive. And he's, you know, again, like he he has faced um, the third most like shorthanded shots against six most even strength uh and he's tied uh, you know something that we didn't identify that was a rough part for him was his uh you know penalty kill goaltending and mm-hmm. the penalty kill got better for a little while because um but then it got worse once mcdonough was out but i mean he's second in the entire league and in you know goaltending at, on the penalty kill and he was great on wednesday yes he was fantastic i mean and, and that's just the problem is you look again this is a guy that's done just so much like absolutely so much um for the team but he's just not getting that support um you know neither of the goals against dallas were at five on five and that's not you know when you spend the good majority of any game on on five on five you should be scoring goals there and they absolutely couldn't and that was a absolutely winnable game for nashville i was super impressed with how they responded how how the second period went and then they just kind of faltered and i don't think that's by any fault of uc soros because again that first one the second one, both eh, they were, you know, he has a weak goal, you know, he'll let in a weak one once, you know, once a game, maybe, but that even nobody, nobody in their right mind at the end is being like, yeah, UC Soros is the reason we lost this game. I don't think anybody, you know, can say that. So, I mean, this is a guy he's, he's doing well. I'm worried about his longevity. Only one goaltender. Uh, no, I take that back. Uh, only two goaltenders have had more games played than him. So, you know, they're riding him and they're riding him hard and they brought in Kevin Lincoln and, Lankanen's been very good. I've been very impressed with Kevin Lankanen. You know, I was a, I was a doubter when they signed him, you know, very thing. Yeah. He's 25th in goals saved above expected. So, I mean, he's doing really well and I'm worried that they're going to ride Saros into the ground. He's going to get injured, 
but then again, maybe that's the best thing and they don't need to make a playoff push because look what happens when they just barely sneak into the playoffs. They either go to the cup finals or flame out in the first round. There you go. Um, last thing here on this week's Preds Power Hour, uh, your stat of the week uh, for us, Brian. Yeah, so let me talk about Matias Ekholm and mm. Alex Carrier. So good. Just completely underrated seasons. I think they're had. I think Ekholm has been maybe one of the most consistent skaters on the entire ice. Probably the best defenseman, in my opinion. Um, mm. Looking at the, all of the defense pairs who have played 200 minutes or more together at 5-on-5, five five, they are fourth in goals allowed per 60 with just 1.2. 1. 1, uh, so that's pretty incredible. Um, sixth in expected goals. So they're controlling shot quality at 60%. And in, in 252 minutes, allowed just five goals. Um, and they are first in the entire NHL at um, at shot quality allowed, you know, per 60. So basically, every game that they're in there, they're 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 playing better defense than any other defensive pair in the entire NHL. Um, they're when they, when they're both on the ice, they're performing about 13 percent higher than average on offense and performing 25% better than average on defense. So, I mean, this team is much better with these two on the ice. Those are numbers that you used to see where, like, especially that offensive number, 13% over, uh, that's usually like, oh, it's because Yossi's on there and he's firing at the net constantly. But, I mean, Ekholm has just been just incredible. I mean, looking at him on an individual level, he's second in the NHL in even strength defense. I mean, out of everybody, forwards, defensemen, obviously, you know, you would think that a forward's not going to be beating him out, but he's just, he's doing fantastic. And, uh, you know, again, like these guys aren't getting, you know, Ekholm's another one of those guys who I would absolutely could see him being a captain after Yossi, but he's another guy that you don't see very often. Now, granted, we've seen a little bit more of his temper recently, you know, a couple times this season, last season, which I always really enjoy it with Ekholm gets, gets angry because it's hard to kind of see it, but he, he gets real mad real fast. Uh, but it's, it's he's been consistent. He's done well. Carrier has, you know, continued on. He just got, got his first point and his first goal of the season a couple games ago. But uh, I really like this pair. I think that they're set there. And I'm glad that the McDonough experiment with Ekholm didn't work out so they could give this one a chance because this one they've really found a, a pair with with these two. Hmm. There you go. Uh, Charlie, what can the GoPucks check out from you and the team over at A to Z Sports this week? This will be totally irrelevant by the time we put this out, but tonight is the Orange Bowl, mm -hmm. and I'll be doing halftime post game with Kayla Anderson of 104.5 The Zone oh, nice. and uh, Jonathan Crompton, former Vols quarterback. We're going to have three folks on it tonight uh, for the bowl game special. And then, I mean, beyond that, the Big Orange Podcast every Monday, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, live on A to Z Sports, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. And I write some stuff on the internet sometimes. And then uh, follow me on Instagram if you want to see pictures of food. And that is what I'll say. <laughs> there you go. Leave it there. Brian, what about you and the team over at On The Forecheck this week? Yeah, so we're getting close to the halfway point of the season. Uh, we've got a big month. I mean, the month has been big for Nashville, even with the break, but got a lot of stuff coming on. All our new people are out there. There's articles by almost every single one of them now, so make sure you get out there. Um, the one that Catherine did on, on the cap thing for Novak, I mean, maybe it, I was very interested in, in finding that stuff out and to see why exactly they did it and the possible reasons. I mean, it's, it's, it's we get these new perspectives, and I think it's fantastic. Um, you know, it's... We've got a lot of good stuff. I mean, I can't, I'm not sure of the schedule for next week as far as with New Year's and everybody else traveling, but you know, we've got great games coming up. You know, we've got Anaheim today, uh, Vegas on New Year's Eve. And then next week we've got Montreal at home. It's the first time uh, we've seen Montreal uh, this season. And then they really start like a big East, East, uh, Eastern Conference swing. So it'll be, it'll be fun. Make sure you're keeping an eye out for that. We'll have another one for you next week. And uh, before we go, you know, I know you got a hard out, but real quick. Real quick trivia question for you two. Mm. Um, so in the last 10 games, how many games have Nashville won against Anaheim, who they're playing tonight? What are your guesses? Oh. I guess like seven. Okay. Is that that's way too optimistic? I don't know. I feel like we we beat them. I don't know. I feel like it's gonna be the exact opposite. It's gonna we're 0 and 10, aren't we? We've lost Chase, 10 in a row. I'm gonna say two. <laughs> They have won 10 straight against the Anaheim. Ducks. 10 straight. Oh! I, th I thought we've done well. Uh -huh. we yeah. I mean, and it, it, this is uh, the that, you know incredible part is, is that uh, they have scored in all 10 of those games. Actually, going back further than that. Let me see here. 
I, I was sorting things wrong. That's my bad. I sit there and told you that. I'm sorry. They're uh, they're they're six and four. My apologies. But the good so thing I was is close. I six and four. Know. Yeah, you were. I I really and I'm really mad that I brought this up now because I just noticed the date was sorted wrong. So maybe it's we okay. don't do this part there, Chase. But yeah, I mean they. <laughs> They've got four in a row. Obviously, they won once already this season in overtime, which you shouldn't need overtime to beat the Anaheim Ducks. What is it like the Los Angeles Anaheim Duck, Mighty Ducks of Anaheim or whatever they used to be called? Uh, and they're not good. They're very bad. They are a very bad hockey team. Uh, but they got Trevor Zegras. They got, you know, those fun guys of my one of my all time favorite players, John Gibson, the only guy, you know, in goal in the entire NHL that his fate that faces worse every night than UC Saros and gets even less of a performance from his team. He's, he's, he's a hero. I think they should like, they should put a statue of him out in front and that's their security system because he's performed in worse conditions. So, you know, bronze wouldn't be able to do it too. So yeah, six, four, uh, in the last 10, they got Anaheim tonight. It should be a good one before they play Vegas, who is very, very good. And they've got a lot of offense. There you go. Charlie, Brian, Thank you as always for the time and I'll talk to y'all both next week. See you then.